welcome back to Nick's allotment. Been quite a while since I've done a vid. Thought better show me face. Right, I'll show you what I've been up to and what I've got growing. Right, these are my spring cabbage. See the pigeons have been pecking them here. Need to put the net over the top. And the ones that have blown mainly this side here still going to eat the leaves off these um, they are like the round spring cabbage I forgot what make they were now and then the other ones are like does that April or Durham's early so I need to get on and eat them right so this is all me no dig beds Um, I'm planning on getting some nets off Easy Nets, Keith Morgan, to go on the top. I want an embroider mesh to fit the lot, so it'll be 15 metres long and then 4 metres wide. And I'm going to get a butterfly net as well. So the embroider mesh will be more for me onions, maybe the carrots. So That'd be them. So, right, these are the potatoes I planted. Uh, variety Swift. Uh, that, you see, they're just popping through there. And the ones under the sheet. I did do a little bit of video earlier. I'll try and pop it in. Show you what I'm doing here. Uh, so these are the other ones. These are Swift. Then under here under the weed membrane and then what I'm going to do is cut a hole in here just to let it through and then hopefully as well it won't dry out so much under there because it's, it's nice and damp at the moment because we've just started having a few showers lately right so what I'm going to do with these these would just be placed on the top like that idea when I was at school we used to have this little book uh, it was a grow your own book a lot of uh, one every month I think it was like one every week and what you what you have to do with the potatoes you put a, like a black sheet over them and once uh, the spruts have started coming through you prick the hole in the polythene so the the main stem grows up in the air and then you you should be able to lift the sheet up and pick all the potatoes off without pulling the plant out so I've seen this years ago that must be 40 years ago I should say showing the age but uh, that was the idea I thought I'd just have a bit of an experiment see if it worked because I never remember doing it right I'm going to get um, a piece of sheet cut to the right size and I might just put a bit of leaf mulch over okay, the top I'll put the sheet just down and I'll just show you what I've done so I've got the potatoes in here so the idea of the sheet is keep it dark so the potatoes don't go green and hopefully they all lie on the top between the sheet and the uh, soil and then you should be able to lift this sheet up pick the big potatoes off and away you go right so what I've got to do when I see the potatoes like this one there just start pushing that up a bit more I'll cut a probably a size of an egg cup and all so the stems can come through and that's how we're going to do it so I had to split the sheet in two as I couldn't get to the middle not a lot of rain but better than nothing 
I know I put a few Vale Sovereign in here. And then further up, I bought these shallots, they're red shallots. They were in bloody cat poo. Uh, these were in a shop they're selling them for eating. And I thought, oh, I'll grow some of those because I couldn't get out of any, like, uh, I think they're red sun or whatever they're called. So not one of them are germinated, no roots, whether they put some of it on them to stop them uh, growing, I don't know. This is the easiest thing I like about your no-dig beds, because you're not walking on it. Just pull the little weeds out. And as you can see, there's hardly any weeds in it. Uh, this is just the main compost out there. Your green waste. Uh, these are golden gourmet. I did buy these for proper seed. And that one's only just started coming up. In there. They're looking alright. I need to put the labels in here. I've got two different sorts of well, I've got three different sorts of garlic. These two I haven't put the labels in, so I forgot what they are. But I have done a video ages ago when I was putting them in so I will know what they are and these ones are Marco you can see down here I had potatoes here last year and I must have missed the odd ones but I don't think I'll get deep enough to get them out if I just keep breaking the tops off I give up in the end Like that. Right, so that's not looking too bad. I've had the odd ones, it's died off. Uh, this is my beetroot, that doesn't look very healthy at the moment, but hopefully it'll come back. I only planted it out yesterday. That's bolt hardy. I did start painting me no dig beds because I'm going to have them black. But that was just to see how it went on. So when I, I've got nothing to do, that'll be whenever, <laughs> um, I should start painting them, see if I can do one a day. These are the broad beans, they've gone well. Uh, and all aquedules. Um This lot here were like spring sown in cell trays for gapping up and those are overwintered and all coming into flower as you see and I put this net on just to top the wind it was battering them like bilio and it proved to be good. I really need to take, just put a net round the outside just to give it a, like a windbreak. But I've done quite a lot of work putting all that compost in. I think I put 10, 12 ton of compost in the four beds and I must have put 15 ton of manure wheelbarrow and that. So it's all settled down now. As you can see, look, there's a few weeds coming up in there. Like I say, they're just easy to pull out in the no-dig bed. Don't need to hoe it. Just put them in the compost bin then. Uh, I have been making compost bins. I copied the idea off Tony O'Neill. Uh, I think it's growing made easy now, he's called himself, not UK here we grow, or what it was. Right, so that's my compost. 
all I need to do is just finish the front I'm going to cut the pallets in half so you've got two sections and then this will be coming up between like that and then I'll put a piece across the front let's just stop them falling out and also I might make one in a lid so it's always in the dark so that or I have to get a big piece of carpet or something on the top Right, so that's me compost bins these are me dahlias in here I've well, never got them out over winter I don't know if I throw any shoots up oh yeah I can just see one in there I should have got them in and I could took cuttings off them so I need to clean these up and weed it all and then also I've got chrysanthemums in here let's see where the stools are they just all need this lot clipping off and then those were grown from seed those were dahlias, I forgot what sort they were but I might get that row out okay this is me carrot beds I only done these uh, a week ago and put the seed in so I haven't got nothing showing yet so these are sweet candle in here plenty of little weeds growing in there look that's like a it's not creeping thistle it's like a sow thistle don't know that's got in there So these are my parsnips, the sort is Countess and I've chitted these so some of them are coming up so far I've probably got 30% oh, germination so far but I should give it another day or two and then I'll jot another seed in each one so, that one there, sorry if I'm waving you around a bit that one's only just coming up oh, another one there just coming up, so I'll give them another day or two so that one's Countess and then this one is Gladiator same again look, just coming up That's when I've sown them. I've started chitting them then. So this is all asparagus. And I put this in these buckets and it's what the birds straight over me tunnel look you can see some wires what they tend to do is sit on there after they've ate berries and they poo it out so if you follow those lines along you usually get asparagus growing underneath them so I'll put it in these buckets and then I'm going to try probably do it next year I'll pull them inside over the winter and then I'll see if I can get some early asparagus so we don't know the variety so I'm going to call it sparrow grass that's the variety laughing I'll just let it all go to seed this time and then need to pull all these little weeds out right this is a grapevine every time we've uh, had it growing the frost keeps coming and knocking it back it's knocked it back twice so I'm not suspecting any fruit this time there's no doubt we're going to get another frost I should knock all these off because I don't want those
Right, this is me one tunnel. Seriously needs a clear out. It was treated like a shed in the winter. I need to get rid of some of it, have a fire and burn some of the rubbish. That's a few decking boards there. As you can see, they're warping, being in the dry. I might move those out. So this is a sheet off Norman's tunnel. I need need to get it out into the car park one night when there's no cars in there and roll it out and then roll it up properly so it don't take much room up. Uh, all the rest of this tunnel is behind here. But it's, I've blocked my access going to me thing so I'm gonna have a clear up behind and put it up there because you keep getting people coming along here looking for scrap I want to try and tidy all this so this is my other tunnel uh, these are some pallets I broke down this is to make me other rest of the compost bins and I'll need to give this a good clear out then it's just like my bird food in here try and show you, show you a few birds later that's all my chilies and whatever wants getting out. So this is the outside of my tunnel. I have got a new sheet to put on it, but I'm going to leave it this year. I'm going to put it on in uh, autumn. But it's got a split come there. That's where the tape goes down. And it's uh, when I spoke to the company who had it off, they uh, said it's the wrong tape. He said it does not stop the heat because it's got uh, chlorine in it. So also it's split there. I started to have a go see if the tape would pull it up. It's not too bad. So I need to get a plank on a ladder or something so I can get up there to tape it. Another split there. Right, so this is over on Joe's plot, and in this bag, he went to get some pots out of it the one day. I don't know if you can see them. Some little robins in there, baby robins. Put it back, don't disturb them. Right, folks. I'm going to have to do this in two parts because it's gone on a bit long. Um, so we'll catch you all next time. Thanks for watching, subscribing, commenting. So ta-ra for now. We'll see you soon. Bye.